Hello, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to the Dorset Council Western and Southern Area Planning Committee on today's Thursday the 11th of June 2020. Hello, good afternoon and welcome to you all. The Dorset Council has suspended face to face meetings since the introduction of the COVID-19 regulations. <clears throat> New regulations now enable decision making processes to continue in accordance with government guidance on social distancing. And this meeting is being conducted under the new rules for remote meetings following changes to the legislation. A recording of the meeting will be available following the meeting. We will now have a roll call of the committee meet members who are attending today's meeting. So I'm the chairman, Simon Christopher. Uh, Peter Barrow. Uh, present. Thank you, Peter. Uh, Kelvin Clayton. I'm here and fighting with a pneumatic drill outside my window. All right. Good afternoon, Kelvin. Uh, Susan Cocking. I'm here, Chair. Good afternoon. Jean Good afternoon. Duncey. Present, Chairman. Thank you, Jean. Uh, David Gray, Vice Chairman. Yes, Chair, I'm here. Thank, Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, Councillor Nick Ireland. Present, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Nick. Uh, Councillor Louis O'Leary. Present, Chairman. Thank you, Louis. Councillor David Shortell. Present, Chairman. Councillor Sarah Williams. I'm here. Thank you, Sarah. Councillor Kate Weller. Good afternoon, Chairman. Thank you. We also have with us this afternoon, and I'd like to introduce the officers, Anne Collins, who is the area lead major applications West team. Darren Good Rogers, chair. area manager Western. Colin Good Graham, chair. highways officer. Good afternoon. Vanessa Penny, definitive map team manager. Good afternoon. Carol Mackay. Definitive Map Technical Officer, Good Chelsea Golidge, Technical Support Officer, Phil Driver, Solicitor, Denise Hunt, Democratic Services Officer. Uh, do we have any apologies? I don't think we have any apologies from any members. Uh, item number two, Declaration of Interest. Members, do any of you have any Declaration of Interest do you wish to make now? No declarations of interest. Item number three, minutes of the previous <coughs> meeting. Members, are you content with the minutes of the previous meeting that have already been circulated? They're all accurate, Chair. Uh, yes. Thank you. Yes, uh, if somebody would like to propose uh, those minutes and somebody to second them using the chat bar, then that can be incorporated in today's records. And then the minutes will be physically signed when we're able to do so and we return to normal working. Thank you. We now turn to four public participation. The committee has received a number of written representations submitted in accordance with the amended speaking protocol for the planning committee meetings included within this agenda. These will be read out by an officer not involved in the application and taken in the following order. Firstly, objectors. Secondly, supporters. Thirdly, councillors. Fourthly, applicants and agents. So we now turn to item number 5A, which is planning application WP, oblique 20, oblique 00, 027 oblique FUL 56 Preston Road Weymouth DT3 6QA the demolition of existing dwelling and the erection of flats with associated access and parking and our presenter is Darren Rogers. Hello good afternoon Darren. Uh, good afternoon chairman and good afternoon committee and members of the public. Um, I take it chairman that you can see the presentation on screen. 
Yes, I can, can Mr. Rogers. Thank you. Uh, OK, thank you. I'll just talk you uh, through the presentation then, Chairman. As you described, 56 Preston Road, Weymouth, demolition of the existing dwelling and the erection of seven flats with um, access and parking. Just a couple of updates um, uh, for you, Chairman and members, um, as regards the officer's report. This should have been circulated to you, but um, to begin with, there's a couple of paras at uh, 5.1 and 5.4 refer to the previous scheme here for eight units, uh, when in fact it is a revised unit, um, a revised scheme for seven units, uh, two units on the ground floor, three on the first floor, two on the second floor. And um, there are two further representations that have been received post the uh, drafting of the committee report. Uh, those are again as listed in your papers, your update sheet, one supporting uh, and one objecting. Um, and finally, Chairman, on the update sheet that's been circulated is a uh, just wording change into uh, recommended condition seven that deals with surface water onto the highway and that is as is now listed on your update sheet. Um, so if I can um, continue, this is the site location. So um, this is Preston Road um, within the uh, defined development boundary of Weymouth. Um, just to uh, the north of the site is a Fursey uh, Close, a cul-de-sac that leads around to a number of other dwellings incorporating uh, some bungalows um, and directly adjacent to the site Number 58 is a two story detached property. Number 54 to the south is uh, a two story detached properties, as are many of them um, along the Preston Road frontage, bar certain plots that have been uh, developed in recent years. Chairman, I've just put this location plan on as well, that this just indicates a bit of history. The, um, this is the adjacent plot to the north at number 58, and in 2008, planning permission was granted for the redevelopment of number 58 um, for six flats. Um, that permission is has lapsed and it is uh, doesn't no longer exist. It's as dead as the proverbial dodo. So um, but it just does indicate that 12 years ago, the former Weymouth and Portland Council considered an application for the redevelopment of number 58 for six flats, which was approved. Our application site is this one here to the south of that. Um, it shows the, the bungalow in blue and it shows the proposed footprint of the now proposed scheme uh, in grey. So that's just a bit of context. Um, as I said, this, this property at number 58 now does not have planning permission for its redevelopment of six flats albeit 12 years ago a permission was granted for it. And just to put that in a bit of context, I thought it was important to show the kind of the changing nature over these last 10 or 12 years along Preston Road. These uh, are a couple of um, sites that were approved by the former Weymouth and Portland Council uh, at numbers 12 and 18. So there's number 12, a uh, redevelopment scheme there. And here's number 18, um, a redevelopment scheme here. Um, moving along, we've got numbers uh, 44, 40, uh, sorry, 42, 44 and 46. And you can see they've got a two storey detached existing dwellings either side of those. And these would have been two storey large detached properties in uh, more spacious grounds. And so uh, 42, 44 and 46 has seen redevelopment in recent years, um, as has number 70 and 72 Preston Road. And again, this is the adjacent property at number 68, which is a two storey detached property. And at number 66, uh, a vacant plot which has permission uh, for an approval for seven flats. Um, it's been uh, demolished there and pending that site's redevelopment. So the whole character of Preston Road is and has been one of change. It's a mixture of uh, two storey dwellings in spacious plots, and or um, redevelopment of those sites for a multitude of six, seven or eight flats, depending upon the site context. That's the aerial photograph chairman that shows the site in question today. Uh, number 58 is to the north, 54 to the south. Uh, this is Fursey Close that wraps around at a higher level, bearing in mind that there's a significant slope across the land. These are primarily bungalows. Uh, number four, Fursey Close, uh, which is a, a, one of the prime issues in relation to the report, is situated here, uh, 58 to the north, 54 to the south, and this is uh, Preston Road along the site frontage. 
that shows the aerial view. Uh, so you can see application site rear garden. It does slope from front to back. There's number four, Fursey Close uh, bungalow set at the rear. 58 located here to the north, which has uh, extensive rear garden area, but also an amenity area to the side. And I'll come on to that in a second. Um, and number 54, which is located to the south. There are trees within the site frontage which are protected through a TPO, but you'll see there's commentary on that as part and parcel of the officer's report as well. So here's some photographs. This is the site frontage. This is the existing access. Um, you've got the existing property that you can just about make out there. This is 54 to the south. 58 to the north is hidden behind that area of foliage. Uh, more recently, the site notice that was erected for the scheme erected there. And of course, the property has since been sold to applicants now forming part of this application. And the properties is hidden that you can just about see there. And there's number 58 and 56 is located there. This is the property itself. Um, it's a pretty dilapidated bungalow. I have to say I've been to the site. The adjacent property at number 58 is located there. 54 is obviously located here and behind that at a higher level is the bungalow at four Fursey Close, which you can't see from these photographs. Um, and then that just shows those two properties either side. So that's number 58. This is number 54. Uh, this is from the rear of the bungalow, so number 54 located there. Uh, that is a property adjacent to four Fursey Close. And this is the rear garden here of number 58 directly to the north. Uh, again, from the rear garden, that's looking back towards number 58 to the north. You can see that by the satellite dish, and that's looking over from the rear of 58 into the rear garden of the application site itself. And this is from uh, the rear uh, of number 58. So our application site is this property here, the bungalow. This is number 58 that has this side uh, amenity area that's used by the occupants for outdoor uh, gardening uh, amenities. Um, and this is number four uh, Fursey Close set uh, at the rear of the plot. Some further photographs uh, from the occupier at 58 that shows number 58 here with the amenity area in our application site. Uh, there are four windows on the side elevation of number 58, two bedroom windows, two living dining areas. But I have to point out that these aren't the only windows to those uh, aforementioned rooms. There are secondary windows both on the rear and the front elevation. Uh, again, showing it uh, from the side of number 58. Uh, uh, and again, from the rear garden, uh, our application site you can just see there, which is the bungalow. Uh, and that's the side outdoor amenity space of number 58, uh, as well as the, they have access to the rear as well and the existing bungalow and the side elevation of that bungalow. Uh, and again, that's taken from the rear garden area of number 58, looking back into that uh, private amenity area of 58 and the application site. So you can see that the rear of number 58 um, has that side area, but also has an extensive uh, rear garden area as well. Those were the uh, four uh, four mentioned windows, Chairman. Uh, living dining on the ground floor, bedrooms above, but there are secondary windows uh, to, 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 uh, to all of these rooms on the uh, front elevation and the rear elevation of number 58 itself. This is taken, Chairman, from the rear of number four, Fursey Close. So this is from the bungalow itself. So our, our application site is located there. You can just see the rooftop of the uh, existing dilapidated bungalow. So that number 58 is located just over here, which is this, this, this side here. And again, looking from the rear of number four, Fursey Close, there's our application site and there's the building at number 54 to the south. And this one shows a central uh, view of the host uh, building just located there. Uh, and again, also from the rear of number four, Fursey Close, there's the application site and there's number 58 to the north. Uh, again, looking from the uh, rear of the application site, there's number 58 um, and the adjacent rear garden and their external amenity area uh, just to the side. One of their external amenity, area, uh, external amenity areas uh, and that's that same relationship in relation to the host 
building and the side elevation of 58. And this is taken from number 54 to the south. So this is number 54's garden. There's the, the application site itself located there. And there is number 58 to the north. And a further photograph from number 54 to the south. So you can see some extensive garden planting between 54 and the host dwelling. Uh, this is looking back towards number four, Fursey Close. You can see it's, it's a much higher level given the slope of the land. Um, and this property or this photograph also shows from number 54 looking at our host building there and number 58 directly to the north located there. And again, higher up at number 54 to the south, it shows number 54, the application site and number 58. So Chairman, it's a scheme to redevelop the site for seven flats. Um, this is the site layout plan. So the access is improved with a couple of visibility displays uh, in relation to the footpath, the grass verge uh, and the highway. There are a number of trees uh, fronting that site, which have been the subject of much discussion with your tree officer, who is now content with regards to the surface uh, material that's proposed for the um, car parking. Uh, 10 car parking spaces, as is indicated here, are proposed. Three of them will have a kind of pergola um, type of structure, canopy uh, across three of them. And there are bike spaces available for uh, up towards uh, eight, uh, eight bikes and bin storage on the site frontage. Um, the layout itself is as is indicated on this layout plan. So you can see the relationship both to um, the side wall, which is located there of the existing dwelling. But what the applicant has done here is also superimpose the um, no lapsed permission for six flats. So please um, pay due regard to that line there, which is the um, existing house. Uh, there's a circa about eight meter difference between the side elevation of that and the side elevation of, of the proposal. And you can see the relationship in the side elevation of this property and the property to the south at number 54. Uh, this is the elevation chairman fronting the road. Uh, but you will, won't see that in its full context because of the uh, protection of uh, retention of trees along uh, Preston Road itself. But if you were to get into the site, perhaps in the car parking area, that's the front elevation that you would see with rendered pitched roofed elevations, uh, stonework, etc, etc. And these two drawings indicate the top one is uh, the ghost in blue of the permission that was granted in 2008. Need to re-emphasize that that's a lapsed permission um, and therefore you need to be looking at the grey area, which is the uh, the, the, the dwelling at number 58. You can see the relationship of that in terms of the mass scale and bulk of the proposal and there is number 54 and you can see the um, elements of distances between uh, boundaries in, in that context and the elevation below um, again shows the lapsed permission in blue focus on the uh, grayed out area which is the existing uh, building at number 58 and then what this shows chairman is the withdrawn previously withdrawn application from last year uh, where the applicants proposed eight units and you can see the mass scale and bulk of what was previously proposed and how officers wouldn't support that the application was withdrawn and following discussions, this is the resulting uh, proposal that you have before you. So you can clearly see that in relation to the street scene and the previously withdrawn uh, application. Uh, that shows the front elevation with the previously withdrawn scheme in blue and the now proposed scheme. And this is a cross section drawing looking from number 54 to the south. So access is uh, here at Preston Road leading up to the car parking area. That's those three car parking um, carport type structures, albeit that there will be 10 car parking spaces in total. And then the side elevation uh, is primarily uh, two and a half, three story high with the, with the, with the, with the roof on the top. Um, and you can see that because the cross section drawing through the site so that the rear is higher than the frontage, um, this will be set in 
so that when viewed from the rear, it, it looks primarily uh, no more than, than, than two storey in relation to the three storey element that you can see uh, on the front elevation. Uh, that shows that cross section drawing again, the south uh, elevation, which just repeats largely what I said previously, uh, other than there's only one very small window on this elevation, and that will be to an obscure glazed bathroom, toilet or ensuite facility. Um, so at the rear chairman, it will look, as I said, two storey because of that cutting into the ground. Um, and there is at kind of ground floor level, albeit higher, higher ground floor level set at the rear. There is this first floor element, sorry, single storey element, should I say, not first floor, single storey uh, single story element that, that he's, um, he's, he's projecting out at the rear. And then above that, which is this elevation here, will be these two um, bedroom windows. There are two master bedroom windows to each of the flats with um, Juliet balconies across um, the, the centre of those windows so that this won't be any form of patio that leads out from here onto the flat roof. And as you can see, in terms of the second floor rear elevation bedroom windows, these will have Juliet balconies, but the first floor roof areas are not accessible to flat six and seven. Uh, and the roof space is not a terrace or balcony and there'll be no capacity for each unit to use it as such. And in fact, there's a condition of the permission uh, chairman that prevents that uh, as is recommended too. So this is the ground floor. So you've got flat one, uh, flat two with access from the, 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 the centre of the front elevation leading to a lift, a master bedroom at the rear, master bedroom and second second bedroom. So effectively these are a, a mirror of each other with a couple of um, sunken patios um, at ground floor level dug into the ground because of that uh, difference in floor floor levels. Uh, first floor plan, entrance uh, staircase leading up to the lift again from ground floor, flat three, flat four and flat five. Um, again, master bedroom and two bedroom, master bedroom, two bed, uh, master bedroom, two bed. And then above that, you've got flat six and flat seven again with master bedroom, bedroom two, master bedroom, bedroom two. So the first floor is essentially a mirror um, and you've got balconies on the front elevation for the two living areas for these two flats. And this is just to reiterate that that master bedroom will have a Juliet balcony uh, with no access to the first floor as is set out on the previous slides, Chairman. Uh, and that's the roof plan. Uh, these are the materials, uh, slate effect roof tiles, uh, a light coastal brickwork, aluminium frame windows and rendered paint, all of which are considered to be acceptable, particularly given um, there are a variety of materials in Preston Road and particularly given the more modern flatted schemes that have been um, built in recent years. Uh, landscaping plan, this just shows details of boundary treatment along each of the boundaries, which is primarily timber fencing, um, and uh, retention of, of brickwork and, and hedging along uh, front elevations. Um, and this is just to indicate that in the areas closely related to the root protection areas, the arboricultural impact assessment that's been submitted notes that this will be a, a no dig cellular, cellular web system uh, with a porous surfacing in order to accommodate the impact on the trees. And you'll see chairman from the report uh, that your tree officer is content with that approach subject to uh, conditions which are listed in the in the in the in the report. Again, that shows the landscaping plan uh, just to re-emphasize the use of boundary treatment and the site schedule in terms of the parking, the bike spaces, the bins and refuse and, and recycling. Uh, these show the cross section drawing. So this is Preston Road. This is the southern uh, cross section drawing. Preston Road is, is here. That's the carport um, providing for three uh, of the cars, albeit that the site will be laid out with 10. Um, and then this shows the, uh, the differences in levels with number four Fursy close at the rear, which is the bungalow, and the, the distances. That's a circa distance of 22 metres between those bedroom windows 
with the Juliet balconies and the rear. And that, in, in planning terms, Chairman, is considered to be a generous and acceptable relationship between rear and rear elevations of, of property. Uh, and again, that's just shown the converse to that. So that's the northern elevation. So Preston Road is now over here, leading up to the car parking, difference in levels, it looking primarily two storey at most, albeit with the roof on top of that at the rear. And again, a distance of circa 22 metres to that first floor rear elevation between those two properties. <clears throat> that this uh, These two um, pictures show the same or be with the previously withdrawn application outlined in blue. And you can see the mass scale and bulk would have been significantly greater. Uh, some argue that the existing uh, application before you, Chairman, is unacceptable. Um, but that the previous scheme would certainly have been uh, one where officers would be recommending refusal on the basis of the mass scale and bulk and its adverse impact uh, on neighbouring occupiers. Uh, that just shows the bin stores, the car parking, canopy areas, uh, simple structures, timber, flat roofed uh, for the carports and the bin storage areas. Uh, back to the application site that indicates that in relation to the neighbours at number 58, 4 Fursey, Close and 54. Uh, a reminder of what's gone before at 12 and 18 Preston Road, 42, 44, 46 Preston Road and 70 and 72 with pending redevelopment at 66. And then some of the key planning points, Chairman, you'll be aware as committee are about the presumption in favour of sustainable development and the five year housing land supply problem that the council continues to, to have um, and that Preston Road itself has been the subject of previously developed planning applications for a variety of flats. Um, given the need to make best and efficient use of land within the urban areas of the main towns uh, of, uh, of Dorset Council. Um, the design and, and scale of the proposal is considered appropriate. Um, there's much uh, commentary in the report, Chairman, about the immunity impacts on those three particular properties. And you'll see from the report about the impact on number 58 to the north in particular with regards to daylight and sunlight assessment which is just one tool. Um, the other tool is me as, the, your, as your professional uh, planning officer in making a planning judgment about the impact on that particular property and the others. And we consider that chairman to be uh, uh, acceptable. If just go back previously to that. Um, this part of Weymouth is known as the local urban character and the landscape character area assessment document. It's previously developed land. It will be viewed in relation to neighboring built form. Um, there are no highway objections raised as a result of the scheme. Biodiversity uh, has been uh, considered and is acceptable uh, to the natural environment team. A certificate of approval has been issued in relation to that. The scheme is still liable um, and on that basis, Chairman, we are recommending approval. Um, what you have before you is the bullet pointed uh, conditions uh, in relation to commencement, materials, landscaping, um, ecology, parking provision and retention, uh, the amended condition seven on your update sheet about preventing water directing, uh, being able to go directly onto the onto the public highway, a construction environmental management plan to be provided about hours of construction and parking for site operatives so that we don't end up with problems of uh, builders vans parked half on the footpath um, and half on the highway. Um, the development being carried out in accordance with the tree report. Uh, details of charging, plug-in electric uh, space provision for the scheme and obscure glazing to those two side windows. Uh, there's only one window on each of the side elevations that's proposed um, for um, uh, toiletry um, or bathroom uh, uses or ensuite uses um, and no use of the first floor rear area from flats six and seven as an external amenity area chairman. Uh, on that basis chairman the application is recommended for approval uh, as per the update sheet and your uh, report. Thank you very much uh, Mr Rogers and indeed thank you to all those officers 
involved in this uh, production today. To any members of the public who have recently joined us, I'll just reiterate that the committee has received a number of written representations submitted in accordance with the amended speaking protocol for planning committee meetings included within this agenda. These will be read out by an officer not involved in the application and taken in the following order. Objectors, supporters, councillors, applicants and then agents. Now, those representations will be read out by an officer and that is Chelsea Gollidge. So Chelsea, would you like to read out the representations, please? Yes, thank you, Chairman. The first thank you very much. The first representation is from Roger Dilley, who is objecting. I believe the statement that the renewed application has addressed all of the previous objections is far from true. I believe the applicant's intention was to initially submit an application that would be rejected and then to submit a second slightly reduced application in a cynical attempt to obtain approval for a still unsuitable application. The application repeatedly refers back to the neighbouring plan application as a justification to approve this application. There are a number of points to make about that now lapsed application. 58's plot size is larger than plot 56 and that was for only six flats, not seven. The number of parking slots and hence metal surface was also significantly less in direct contravention of ENV 12. The new application doesn't mention excessive free water runoff caused by heavy downpours, which has expressed which has caused major flooding issues along Preston Road and has been assessed by the highways manager as saturated and unable to support additional loading. There is no reference to the collection of recycled waste. The whole development is still very close to the rear of the plot with at least six higher bedroom, higher floor bedroom windows looking directly over the bungalow at the rear. Preston Road is saturated with new flats remaining unsold for over a year. EVN 10 calls for new developments to contribute to maintaining and enhancing local identity. We don't need more flats. HOU S3 calls for rec recognition of the mix of the current range of house types. HOU S4 calls for new developments to be compatible with the existing character of the surrounding area. Preston Road has a reputation for large family housing and more flats will negatively impact that character. COM7 concerns road safety. This application makes absolutely no redress for the serious increase of traffic joining Preston Road close to a busy junction. It negatively impacts the existing hazardous line of sight from the mature poplar tree and the high road verge at the entrance to the plot. Construction vehicles have historically parked on nearby verges, blocking traffic and causing hazards to road and pedestrian traffic alike. The agricultural impact assessment appears to hide the fact that five of the six trees currently on the plot will be removed. It is worrying there are no details given as to the location or size of replacement trees. The application makes no mention of TPOs, which I would be surprised if none existed for the current plot. Next statement is from John Lyles, who also objects. It's hard to believe developers feel profit can still be made from flats along the Preston Road. The once beautiful tree-lined approach to Weymouth is looking more like entering an industrial estate. Developers are keen to use previous developments as a precedence for their own. This was denied by Weymouth and Portland Plan Authority at a previous case. They clearly stated no such precedence exists. Flats are fine in the right place, but to destroy perfectly good properties in the process makes no sense other than for money. There are currently two other sites along Preston Road back on the market instead of being developed. One where the house was demolished and left as a building site. If, as I believe, the market is saturated with flats, we could end up with another empty plot. Apart from my objections on moral gr and grounds of aesthetics, there are planning matters on which I feel this fails. The proposal is a gross overdevelopment of the site which will impinge on properties either side and especially to the rear. The now patio doors, assume Juliet balconies, are still large windows looking into the bedroom of the rear property. It will clearly block light from number 58. There is a loss of some trees and potential risk to others on the site once diggers start manoeuvring. Although Preston Road is now B Road, the traffic volume is no less. I live there. Any additional vehicles would not be welcome, certainly by cyclists and pedestrians. Wessex Water are on record as stating that the old sewerage pipes are already at full capacity. Same applies to the doctor's surgery, already pretty stretched. 
Please think very hard about what legacy such development leaves behind, rather than pander to a developer's greed. Think for a moment about what this wanton destruction does to the lives of the people who live there. The next is from Christine McManus, who also objects. I object to the above plan and application because I disagree with many of the developers' claims, some of which are definitely inaccurate. The developers claim a precedent has been established by repeatedly likening their proposals to other flattened developer developments along the road. However, their accompanying diagrams show that nowhere along Preston Road has such a large building been crammed into such a relatively small plot. Therefore, due to its close proximity, it compromises the light and privacy of, of existing residents. This contravenes NPPF guidelines. The ecological report the developers submitted was very inconclusive and, in in and inaccurate. It claims an aerial survey showed no ponds within 250 metres of the proposed site and therefore no amphibians likely to be foraging. Our pond, less than 10 metres away, is full of amphibians. Proof was supplied at initial meeting. This is yet another possibility of guidelines being ignored re nature at conservation. The de developers include a daylight survey. How can a building much larger and only 8 metres away from the south facing windows of the house next door not adversely affect the light entering the house? Are these surveys merely paying lip service to requirements? Does anyone with relevant knowledge actually check the validity? The developers' misleading diagrams claim the rear bungalow will only see the ridge of the new roof. This is also untrue. The large back windows of the top flats will overlook the garden and bedroom of the bungalow, proof at previous meeting. The developers claim to be making the best use of, of available land, but this is a gross overdevelopment of the site. There would be little outdoor space for potential residents. The excessively large car park would add to road flooding. The extra cars crossing the footpath would increase the likelihood of a serious accident. The MPPF promotes maintaining an area's prevailing character, enhancing local identity. The developers claim their building fulfills these obligations. However, the latest block of flats hasn't sold after more than a year. Obviously not the best use of land. Definitely not enhancing the local area with a huge tarmac car park at the front and permanent sailboards. Previously, blocks have been attractive, had, have had sufficient inside and outside space to meet the needs of the elderly residents and ensure their well-being. They supported requirement for strong, healthy communities. Preston Road doesn't need more flats that are not fit for purpose just because developers want to cram in as many as possible, regardless of suitability. The developers should properly dis decrease the number of flats and building size in order to comply with MPPF guidelines to make best use of land and protect neighbour amenities. The next comment is from Linda Brown, who also objects. My objections are twofold. The height of the proposed block of apartments, I would like a further reduction in height. The number of apartments, I would like five apartments in the block. Character of area and the future. The above development should be a positive addition to the attractive tree-lined Preston Road with its varied style houses and bungalows interdispersed with several infill apartment blocks that are, that are an appropriate scale to the size of the plots. Except 138 Preston Road, which, like the proposed, is a cramped development supporting a large tarmac car park. Not surprisingly, completed summer 2019, only one sold in November 2019. It is worrying that the, should the council's future planning be to demolish every detached house that comes up for sale with ever more dominating blocks of apartments, Preston Road will no longer be that attractive tree-lined road. Is that the council's future policy plan? The reduction in scale and number of flats to the proposed block was welcomed, but still when looking out the back windows of four Fursey Close, the roof of the existing bungalow can be clearly seen despite the rise in land to the rear which means the window of the first and second floors of the proposed block will have an uninterrupted view on into their home. This doesn't quite happen quite so overbearingly on the other developments along Preston Road, as they have substantially longer rear gardens. Reducing the number of apartments to five would take away a floor. The block would then be an appropriate scale to the plot size, the roof line in keeping with the neighbouring houses and so have a minimum impact on existing residents. Highway safety issues. Preston Road is an all-year busy round approach road to Weymouth, a bus route for number 4, 4 8, 5, 201 and X54. It is used by cyclists and pedestrians, locals and visitors. By reducing the number of flats to five, the impact on an already busy approach road will be minimised. Pedestrians, often families and cyclists who Dorset Council are encouraging to walk and cycle down to the beach would say as it is, a free-flowing safe approach road into Weymouth for everybody. The next comment is from Adam Keane, who also objects. 
The proposals are contrary to policies SUS2, ENV16, COM7, HOUS3 and HOUS4 of the adopted plan 2015, detrimental to the character and appearance of the area and harmful to the residential amenities of its neighbours. The biodiversity report submitted is, in, in, is inaccurate. There is a pond within 250 metres of, of the development site and so the proposals could affect nature conservation. The LPA rely on the lack of a five year land supply to recommend approval. This is the wrong approach to take in justifying the proposals and does not outweigh the material harm caused to character and amenity. It is, on, it is inconceivable that the LPA found the previous proposals for eight two bedroom flats unacceptable and yet the insignificant reduction to the size of the building and parking area in the current proposals now acceptable. The LPA's objections in relation to the previous scheme still stand. The proposals are harmful for the following reasons. Overlooking privacy. The Juliet balconies and windows result in harmful views of four Thursday close. The minimum accepted distance between the two properties at two or three storey height is 21 metres. The proposed is 20 metres. Loss of light. The light survey shows that the levels of light received only just meet the BRE guidelines for what is considered acceptable. The accuracy of this survey is contested and if time allowed, 58 would have submitted their own evidence to show the contrary. A decision should be deferred for this additional evidence to be commissioned and considered. The photos attached to this statement clearly show the garden area of 58 and how the proposed flats will desecrate the amount of light and sunlight received to what is currently a well used and pleasant area. Outlook. The photographs show the south facing aspect of the garden in 56, demonstrating how replacing this subservient bungalow with a large three storey block of flats will be seen from 58. The increase in scale and volume of building in this position will severely affect the outlook of 58. Traffic. Six additional households will result in an increased traffic which com would compromise the safety of pedestrians and other road users. The proximity to two bus stops is dangerous. Scale and character. The replacement of a bungalow with a three-storey development adjacent to the single domestic scale two-storey house is harmful and out of character. The loss of trees and shrubs is substantial and will permanently damage the verdant setting of the site and how it is seen in the street scene. Residential intensity. Preston Road cannot absorb any more multiple occupancy buildings and the site cannot accommodate for the needs associated with six additional dwellings and the in increase from 137 metres squared to 782 metres squared which is an increase of 571%. The next comment is from Stuart McCarty who supports the application. I am writing to confirm that I am fully in favour of the plan application to redevelop 56 Preston Road Weymouth into seven apartments. Firstly, there are already se several similar properties of this type of design which have, been which have received plan approval and have been built, do not in any way distract from the other properties in the road. Secondly, the development will bring a much needed financial impact on the local area. It is likely to employ local Weymouth people as well as the income to local shops and new residents. Lastly, having reviewed the concerns expressed, I believe that the various reports and the appropriate bodies have adequately answered them. The next comment is from Jonathan, Jonathan Picard, who also supports the application. I am writing to whoever is concerned regarding the proposed development of the above address. I fail to understand how planning can be refused due to the already completed developments from single dwellings to flats that have also been permitted along the road and that the above mentioned site also has ha had highways approval already agreed and the number of units has already been reduced. I feel that I had to express my th thoughts as I see no reason why they should not grant planning permission. The next is from Claire Woodcock who also supports. I am writing to express my strong support and agreement with the proposed development of seven much needed dwellings on the above mentioned site. This is, a, this is a sustainable location in an area that would hugely benefit from such a regeneration and would encourage others to upgrade in a similar way, bringing economic growth and improvement to the whole area. I look forward to hearing a positive outcome in relation to this site. The next comment is from Councillor Tony Ferrari for Littlemore and Preston who objects. I am the ward councillor for this location on both the Town Council and Dorset Council. I object to the application. The principle of conversion of single family homes into multiple dwellings is well established on Preston Road. The concern with this application is not the principle, but the scale of development. There are issues that exist with the current dwelling, but these are enormously magnified because of the size of development, replacing one dwelling with seven. As I am limited to 450 words, I will address some of them. 
Vehicles exiting the site onto Preston Road represent a traffic hazard. The view from the drive up the hill is limited. High speed traffic could reach an exiting vehicle before it could clear the near carriageway when turning right. A vehicle exiting turning left will be a slow moving obstacle to a fast descending vehicle. This problem exists with the current house occupants. It is likely to be seven times worse with this number of dwellings. The fewer dwellings, the lower the risk. The building is built right up to the boundaries to the north and south and extends further back onto the plot towards the houses behind compared to the house it replaces. It is a story higher than the building that precedes it and the adjacent neighbours. The application makes note of earlier permission to develop a block of flats at number 58. That permission was never built, but it was in substance the same height as the existing house, so this block is a story taller. The bulk and height of this new proposal would be extremely intrusive looking down, or perhaps it should be described as looming over the adjacent properties on all sides. There is a huge issue of intrusion and loss of privacy. These flats will look down into the windows and gardens of the houses that surround it. I believe the key problems with this proposal are simply the result of the scale. A building which matched the height of the surrounding homes and had fewer flats would be less intrusive and safer and would be worthy of support. This one is too large. I recommend that the committee reject the application. The next statement is from Gary House, who is the director of Lido Homes and is the applicant. Hello, my name is Gary House and I'm the director of Nilo Homes Limited, the applicant for this application. Nilo Homes are a well-established property developers based in Dorset and currently building at various sites within the county, including a 23-unit scheme at 66 Dorchester Road in Weymouth. We acquired, we acquired 56 Preston Road last year and appointed award-winning David James Architects to build an attractive scheme which we believe would be a positive contribution to the community and a betterment to the street scene if approved. We, along with our consultants, have worked very hard with the plan officers and his consultees over the last nine months. We have listened, respected and overcome any potential harm to vehicular and pedestrian movements, tree and ecology on site and amenity to our neighbours. Members, you will hear a number of negative comments from reject objectors today, covering almost every negative claim that can be said against a proposed development. You may hear that we have misled, lied or abused the plan system. This is simply untrue and very disappointing to hear. You may today hear or have previously read neighbouring objections stating that the development has windows which directly overlook elderly residents and children's bedrooms or a swimming pool. Again, this is untrue. Your officer has confirmed that there will be no significant adverse impact on any of the neighbouring properties sufficient to warrant refusal of permission. There may be concern over other flats already for sale in the road or other sites already approved and yet to be developed, but that is quite normal and gives those seeking new homes a wider choice. We sympathise that change can be difficult to accept, but every flat, bungalow or house we live in was once a previous plan application and construction site. We build desirable, high quality homes and if approved today, this scheme will commerce later this year, creating economic benefits to the area in this uncertain time. I thank you for your time and hope you support your officer's recommendation to approve this application. The next statement is from Neil McCohen, who's the agent. My name is Neil McCohen and I am a senior plan consultant at Pure Town Planning, speaking on behalf of the applicant. The proposal for reduced seven unit scheme follows a withdrawn application for eight units in 2019. Having met the officer on site, concerns were raised in respect of the scale of the building and the potential impact on amenity of 58 Preston Road and 4 Fursley Close. It was agreed the best approach would be a revised application which addressed these specific objections, working in collaboration with officers. The height and massing of the second floor rear projection has been considerably reduced. The fundamental change has two impacts. Firstly, the front elevation ridge line and gables have been lowered, which are more effective as the neighbouring properties in the Preston Road street scene. Secondly, the reduced massing to the rear safeguards against any harmful impact upon the privacy and amenity of 58 Preston Road or 4 Fursley Close. The application is supported by a daylight impact report demonstrating that the reduced height, reduced front and rear projections and absence of windows to this northern elevation prevents the building appearing overbearing to number 58. The existing eight metre gap between side elevations is retained. A similar arrangement is seen to number 54, which the officer's report confirms will not impact their privacy or amenity. The amended rear elevation removes the previously proposed rear gable and upper floor balcony, whilst also setting the building further away from the shared boundary to four Fursey Close. There is no outdoor space which can overlook the eastern neighbour. The plans create a 20 to 22 metre separation to four Fursey Close, which not only prevents the building from being overly visible, but also safeguards the privacy and amenity of both properties. 
Despite objections from properties on the western side of Pre Preston Road in regard to potential overlooking, it is noted that said properties are positioned between 55 metres and 74 metres from the proposal, set behind an established tree line boundary, providing only glimpsed views of the building. The revised application has the support of Highway Authority. Following extensive consultation in respect of landscaping and trees, the tree officer fully supports the revised proposal, establishing that the neighbouring and protected trees on site will be unaffected by the proposal. This high quality development is a product of extensive collaboration with officers. All aspects of the withdrawn application have been addressed. The proposal is respectful of the Preston Road street scene, the character of the area and neighbouring amenity, resulting in the full support of respective planning, highways, trees and biodiversity officers. With this recommendation in mind, I ask that you please take this into consideration and offer your support today. That's all the statements. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much, Chelsea. We will now hear from Mr Rogers again. Um, Mr Rogers, would you like to comment on the representations that you've heard? There have been many comments made. Would you like to comment on any of those points at this stage? I don't think so, Chairman, other than to say that all of the comments that have been made are covered in one way or another in the committee report. Uh, thank you, Mr Rogers. I'd like now to give the opportunity to Mr Colin Graham uh, from Highways. Uh, good afternoon. Colin. Yeah, good yeah. afternoon. Would Colin you Graham, like please. to comment on what you've heard? Obviously, there's been mention of Highways matters in respect to this application. Um, yes, if I may, please, through you, Chair. Thank you. Um, yeah, the um, location I've read in uh, representations, well, I've read all the representations, and I've just heard the ones that have been read out as well, um, about the Preston Road. It was widened out. Somebody said it was narrow. That was in one of the correspondence I read. It's that it was narrow. Um, I was heavily involved with the widening scheme back in about 1995. And we widened the carriageway and we also created a verge and a footway that didn't used to be there. Um, the tree was originally in the front garden. So that's improved things uh, a lot. The road itself, it's been downgraded to a B class road, which we heard. The traffic is signed from Chalbury Corner to go along Littlemore Road and coming down the Weymouth Relief Road. I appreciate traffic still does come down here, but uh, I don't think it's as much as it historically used to be, and certainly when I was working there. The, um, the verge and the footway is just under 4.5 metres wide. That's a good distance of setback and it actually gives good visibility when you leave the drive. I take the point about the tree, it's something we looked at at the time when we um, did accommodation works. The, it's on the, what we call the trailing side. The, the traffic that's approaching on the near side is very, there's very good visibility for that. The road is quite long and straight. Um, when you're looking um, left as you exit, yes, there's a tree there, but there's a wide footway to one side of it. You don't have to position yourself where you're totally blocked by the tree. You can see behind it. That didn't used to be originally be the case. The, there was comments were made about the um, proximity to the bus stop. That is sufficiently clear. Um, the bus is would it be out of the way. Um, buses in using a bus stop are regarded as a temporary feature anyway. They, they move on, of course. Um, the driveway is to be slightly widened to allow for easier, well, to allow for simultaneous access and egress because the increase, because the additional flats. Um, the bus route means that it makes the location more sustainable. So therefore you don't always have to use the car. One could always take the bus into town. Um, I think that's it, Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you. OK, thank you, Mr Graham. We will now turn to members, starting with Councillor David Shortell. David, would you like to ask a question? 
Thank you, Chairman. Good yes, afternoon again, questions. David. Please good comment. Good afternoon, Chairman, and good afternoon, members. Um, yes, I've got a few questions, if I may, uh, start off this. First of all, going back to the comments about the large tree in man, which is immediately outside the property. Uh, I know highways have said that they've got no objections, but I'm sure there must be a uh, a, a, uh, a inconvenience or in fact a degree of danger in um, exiting that particular property because of course the the uh, view uh, to the left is going to be uh, um, um, uh, uh, interrupted by uh, the tree irrespective of how you position your car and it must be quite dangerous coming out of there either but left or right because of course you simply cannot see um, the, uh, the the roadway. Also, uh, mention has been made about the bus stop. Well, I know the buses are only a temporary measure, but there again, it's only temporary at the moment. Uh, at, the, the, at the moment that you uh, you decide to exit the property, if it's there and taking uh, taking uh, passengers on board, then it's going to be there for a few moments, and so people simply will not be able to see the road. So I'm a bit concerned about the the uh, the, the uh, entrance and egress from that particular site. Um, also, my second question is uh, the parking position for the contractors. Now, there isn't uh, sufficient uh, uh, room other than parking on the pavement, which has already been mentioned, for the contractors to park up whilst the whilst the work is being carried out. That must be dangerous in itself to park on the pavement, and it must be a very inc a great inconvenience uh, uh, to 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 road users and pedestrians alike. Question three, the, de the deposed uh, development uh, uh, it is closer to the rear bungalow than the current, um, the current uh, 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 property. And also, of course, uh, the, um, the uh, gap between the, ex the existing properties and the proposed development, both left and right, uh, also has an open to debate. Now, I assume that from what has been said, that the development at, at uh, 58 is now uh, withdrawn. So therefore, um, uh, that's not going ahead and eight metres perhaps mm. is, is, is sufficient. But then it goes, it, there is a, a possibility that the, the actual uh, proposal of 58 will come back into, into, uh, uh, into uh, uh, development and, um, and therefore, of course, the building will be much closer, therefore, than the, than the existing property. Um, there are similar developments on the same side, and of course there are. Uh, 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 they've all been um, uh, left in advance because this, this simply haven't been built yet. What is to say that this will actually be uh, uh, taken up uh, quickly by by potential residents? And the the the, the lapse in application. I'm a little bit concerned about how cramped the actual proposal is. I noticed that in fact that the adjacent property 58 was a proposal for six flats on a larger footprint. This is for seven on a much smaller, smaller and narrower prop, um, 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 area. Therefore, I'm, I'm thinking that perhaps that development is a little bit contrived, a little bit compact and overbearing, and I'm very concerned about that. So that's a few questions, Chairman, for you to mull over. Thank you. OK. Thank you very much, Councillor David Shortell. So everybody knows the direction of travel. Uh, the next members to speak will be in the order Councillor David Gray, then Councillor Nick Ireland, then Councillor Sarah Williams, then Councillor Louis O'Leary. However, at this stage, I will ask uh, Mr Rogers to react to what he's heard from Councillor Shortell and then perhaps we'll hear from the highways officer Mr Colin Graham also to respond in respect of what he heard from Councillor Shortell. So Mr Rogers do you have any comments to make on what you've heard from Councillor David Shortell about this development? Um, thank you Chairman. Um, uh, with regards to highway matters Colin Graham is more um, experienced right. and, and he's the highways officer but what I can tell you is as the case officer is that the MPPF um, talks about access issues being unacceptable 
um, in terms of their severity, causing an, either an unacceptable highway safety problem or access is severe. Now, I wouldn't regard the existing tree in the verge on the highway as being such a severity impact to warrant the refusal of permission. That's my personal view. Mr. Graham, um, I would suggest it's the same view on the basis that highways have raised no objections to the planning application. With regards to the um, scheme at number 58, I would like members to disregard that previous scheme. It was an approval for six flats back in 2008. As I said, as part of the presentation, that was 12 years ago. The permission lapsed. It is dead as the proverbial dodo. And should permission be granted for the application before you, if at some stage the occupiers at 58 or a developer decides to make a planning application for the redevelopment of that, then obviously that will be considered on its own individual merits in relation to any extant um, approval uh, at that particular time. So you need to, as a committee, consider the impact of the current proposal on the existing dwelling at number 58 and not some scheme that was um, approved um, upwards of 12 years ago. In terms of ecology, um, you'll see from the report that your natural environment team have uh, liaised with the applicant about the biodiversity requirements. And we've been talking about uh, representations have been talking about ponds within 250 metres or within 50 or 90 metres. Um, what I would say on that is that um, those are, as far as I'm aware, not um, public um, ponds or uh, or nature conservation ponds per se, um, but this is a built up area. Uh, the ecology um, uh, report has been submitted to the appropriate national environment team officers who have issued a certificate of approval uh, for that. And, and there, there, there lies the matter in terms of in terms of ecology. Um, in terms of the impact on neighbours, well, that is a member decision. Um, that's a committee decision. Um, you will see my report looks into that uh, in detail in relation to the, the three surrounding prime properties, and you'll see the conclusions that I've come to. Um, it's up to members to agree with those conclusions or disagree as they, as they see fit, Chairman. Thank you, uh, Mr Rogers. Now, Mr Colin Graham, would you like to make any comments in respect of what you heard from Councillor David Shortell about this application, please? Yes, please, Chair. Yeah, for me. Thanks, Thank Colin. You. The um, regard the tree, which which just heard um, my colleague there confirm as that he regards it as well as not having a severe impact in terms of what the MPPF says, and the. I do note the tree has got some uh, sort of uh, light growth coming off the side of the trunk. Things could be improved by clearing that back. I'm not sure if you saw that in the photo. Um, ultimately, it's a high waste tree. I believe it was originally due to have been taken down as part of the road widening. Um, but we know that people like trees, so we attempted to keep it and retain it. But it, it um, that was 25 years ago. I, I, I'm not a tree expert. It could be one option is that members could look at removal of the tree. I don't like that personally, but there we go. It's a suggestion. Um, the As it stands at the moment, I couldn't refuse because of that. The bus stop, um, the comment was made about that being in use, uh, when it is being used, it blocking visibility. That's to the trailing side visibility, which is still important, but you'd come out into a road, if there was a bus there, you'd come out into the road and you'd very clearly be able to see round the bus right down the road and the bus would be able to see you as well. So everybody would be able to react. That is not a reason for refusal. Um, it wouldn't stand up. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Graham. Chair, uh, Chairman, we can now I now hear from... Chairman. Uh, sorry, Mr. Sorry, Rogers. Yeah, sorry, sorry to put it. I just wanted to make a comment on Colin uh, Graham's comments about the member's ability to require the removal of the tree in the highway. Um, and I just wanted to point out to members that that's outside the application site. The application site is, is the red area of the application site. The highway tree 
is in the highway. So that's not the applicant's responsibility. So I just wanted to kind of make that aware to members. Yes, thank you, Mr. Rogers. Thank you for your clarification. Uh, we will now hear from Councillor David Gray. David. Chair, my two questions have been answered, so I'll pass. Thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, Councillor Nick Ireland. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I've got two comments, really. Um, thank you for uh, Darren Rogers' clarification after David Shortell's questions. Um, I, I found in the presentation that the mention of the previous application back in 2008, I don't think it helped. Um, I think all we needed to do is say it existed and it's no longer you know, you know, extant. The fact that it's on the elevation diagram, which is right in front of us now, isn't helpful at all. It doesn't exist. And as you know, it was a different council back in 2008, different, different members of a planning committee. Who knows what would happen if that came back? Um, but the, it does lead me on to my, my real point is that um, if you if you look at the um, the, the aerial view, maybe I, I think it's the which document it was. It was the one that basically shows fairly close and the existing properties um, from above, pretty much. Um, that that basically is an island, and there's lots been made of, of Preston Road developing over the years. And I've lived in Osmington just up the road since um, early 2001. Yeah, that one. Oh, no, that one. <laughs> is it? Yeah. Um, and so we've been talking about Preston Road as, as changing over time, and it has, and I know it has. Um, yeah, I remember the, I think it was the, the Riverside Hotel that was down the bottom, it was now flats, etc. And especially down the bottom of Preston Road, it has changed considerably. However, around this actual application site, it hasn't. We have no big buildings. It's It's all, you know, family properties both in and around in both the closest around and opposite and that, that's that's the my, my point is you are changing the area preston road is a long road and in this particular focus point there are no flats and that, that's the concern i have is we're going to stick a block of flats right in the middle of somewhere which doesn't have those sort of properties that's all i have to say uh thank you councillor ireland uh mr rogers would you like to respond and perhaps also reiterate the square footage of the existing bungalow, sorry, the square meterage of the existing bungalow compared to the proposed. Uh, Chairman, I haven't got those figures in front of me that should all be listed in the report. In terms yeah, of they the, were quite substantial, weren't they? Could yeah, I mean, I'll, change. I'll, I'll, well, let me just go back to uh, answer that question. And there's your there's your answers. In I haven't got the figures, but there's your answers in terms of the um, the property at number 58. Uh, forget the red area, um, as Councillor Ireland has just suggested. Um, that was put there just to indicate that um, at one stage, of course, in 2008, the w former Weymouth and Portland Borough Council Planning Committee didn't agree with what Councillor Nick Ireland has just said, because it would have been an island, uh, in his words, um, uh, at that stage. So number 58 would have been the first redevelopment proposal for flats um in that context with the existing bungalow situated next door to that so so those are the principles and where you've got um the national planning policy framework talking about making best and efficient use of land in urban areas to prevent the urban sprawl and impacting on wider um rural or urban fringe areas um it seems to me um that the scheme that you've got before you um, sits comfortably in that wider context, but also in the wider context of Preston Road as a whole. I don't think that we should be micro looking at Preston Road in terms of its uh, uh, individual parts. It, it is what it is. And of course, at some stage in the past, uh, one of these properties um, got planning permission for the redevelopment of flats. Um, and that's continued on various plots as my planning history slides have indicated. And of course, in this particular run of four or five properties, number 58 at some stage in the past was redeveloped, sorry, was granted permission for flats um, with a bungalow situated next door to it. So that's why the recommendation is as it is, Chairman. Thank you very much, Mr. Rogers. Uh, we will now hear from Councillor Sarah Williams and then we will later hear from Councillor Louis O'Leary uh, and then Councillor Kate Weller. Then after that, we will hear again from Councillor David Shortell. So Councillor Sarah Williams. Uh, 
Yeah, just a quick question. There was a comment uh, by one of the objectors about uh, increased flooding in Preston Road due to water runoff and also the capacity for Wessex water sewers. Uh, have you got any comments to make on that, either Darren or Colin, please? Um, Chairman, if I may, through yourself, um, there's been nothing uh, that's been submitted as part of the planning application that would raise a concern about flooding. There is a condition requiring no surface water runoff uh, in accordance with details to be submitted in terms of water runoff onto the highway. Um, obviously, connections to uh, surface water uh, and fell sewage will have to be provided, but those are largely separate um, utility um, or approvals that need to be got uh, over and above any planning permission granted. OK, thank you. Councillor Louis O'Leary. Good afternoon, Councillor Louis O'Leary. Thank you, Chairman. Um, it is uh, my ward area and I have been up there a few times to uh, look at the site. Um, the concerns I've got is we're talking about a lot of talk about Preston Road and the nature of it changing. And as Councillor Nick Harlan pointed out, most of that change has taken uh, place on the more overcombe part of that road, rightly or wrongly. So it would depend on the application. Um, but further up the road, it does tend to be larger houses. Uh, there's a lot more uh, offshoot roads on that, whether it's Fursey Close or you go up towards um, the other turn in by the doctor's surgery. Um, and so it, the nature of the road isn't changing at this far. Um, to change this building, I think the site is far smaller than the other sites built on. Um, I just think the site is too small for seven flats to be built on it. I think, uh, you know, Mr. Rogers said about, uh, Mr. Graham, sorry, said about um, traffic on Preston Road. If traffic's decreased, one thing that has, if traffic's decreased, one thing that has increased is the speed of traffic along Preston Road, which is a very straight road uh, with a few bends and people do come racing down Preston Road. And now, I, you know, there is a speeding issue. Um, in terms of, uh, you know, we always get pointed out the housing supply. There is a house on this site. Um, it's not as if this is an empty piece of land. Um, there is a house on this site. The What we are uh, suggesting to build in its place um, are not affordable homes. They are just uh, flats generally used for retired people. Um, and what we've seen the last couple of years, the demand isn't there for that anymore uh, on Preston Road. Hence the fact that most of the houses along, a lot of the flats down there that have been recently built are still up for sale. Um, so I would, I do have a lot of concerns about this development. Um, and I think we've said it on previous developments, we should always try and use, reuse a building. Um, there is no reason why this bungalow cannot be reused. Uh, I'm just a bit concerned the developer is letting it to get worse and worse uh, in order to uh, push the argument that it can't be reused and has to be redeveloped. But um, yeah, that's I, I would, um, I will be voting no to this application for the reasons I've just outlined. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Louis O'Leary. Uh, would either Mr Rogers or Mr Graham wish to comment? Obviously, I don't want you to repeat yourselves uh, where you've spoken previously, but do you have anything fresh to add, having heard from Councillor Louis O'Leary? Uh, ch chairman, I, yeah, Chairman, I, I don't think I can add any more to the report, the presentation and some of the answers are, I've already given. I don't think I can add any further. And indeed, Mr. Graham. <coughs> yeah, through you, Chair. Um, yes, please. Just a comment on the speed of the traffic. That would be a, a police enforcement matter. Um, if uh, not, for, not for me to refuse it. On my uh, own experience in the 35 years I've lived down here, and um, the number of years I worked for, that's when I started working for Wilmington Portland Borough Council. Speed of the traffic, to my mind, has, um, if anything, decreased because of the number of times the police van uh, can, comes out. I'm real very aware that there's, there's less tolerance to speed, well, uh, less tolerance to, to speeding vehicles. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Graham. Uh, we will now hear in order from Councillor Kate Weller. Uh, we're going to hear then from Councillor David Shortell uh, because one of his questions has not been answered. And then we're going to hear from Councillor Jean Dunsteath. So, uh, Kate, Councillor Kate Weller, good
Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, I have to to say that I, I sat on Weymouth and Portland Borough Council's planning committee for a very long time, so was party to the approval of most of the um, apartment developments along Preston Road. Um, uh, rightly or wrongly, I have to say on each of those occasions, I would have preferred to, to see most of them being a little bit smaller and my feeling, I don't have any objection to, to this development occurring. I think it's too large a, a development for this plot and I would prefer to see it uh, a story lower. I think having said that, I think that if we refuse, um, we would have to find a very, very good reason for so doing. Um, and we'll be back in the position that we were at the last meeting of trying to find those reasons. Last time we managed it very adequately. I'm not sure we would again this time. I'm sorry to say that because I know that puts us in a difficult position. Um, flooding has occurred there, but it's always been further up and I thought that mitigate a lot of mitigation work had been done there. So I'm not concerned about flooding. I am concerned about the trees. One of the representations suggested that five of the six trees were to be removed. I seemed to think from Mr Rogers' presentation that a number of the trees were being retained, hence the reason for the semi-permeable uh, ground coverings to, to facilitate that. So if we could get a, a confirmation on how many trees will actually be lost and what we're doing in terms of um, replanting trees where um, appropriate on that site would be useful. Um, and uh, that that's basically my thing. As I say, I, I, I would have preferred to see five rather than seven uh, houses, uh, uh, flats rather, but I suspect that um, that will be difficult to achieve. Thank you. Uh, Mr Rogers, would you like to make any clarification in respect of trees, etc? Uh, yes, Chairman, just on trees, as you can see from the, um, the uh, street scene view I've got for photograph. You'll see that there's a number of um, of trees on this site. For example, this is this is a tree, uh, but it's rather ornamental. This is a a rather large bush. But the the most important trees is, is largely this one. There's one here, and there's another one in this corner. Uh, this is that tree that members were talking about in terms of the highway. Um, but if I can just get you down to yeah, here's another couple of shots. Again, another ornamental. Uh, tree at, at, at the frontage um, that's going to be lost um, but I just want to get to the layout plan um, because it's it's the more important trees that we consider to be of value that your tree officer uh, if I just go back to that one here we are so you've got these more significant trees there's one in this corner here that's the tree on the street frontage there are these two here and there's one in this neighboring property here which is um, slightly just outside the application site but the remainder are all contained within this area here which are largely ornamental um, and your tree uh, officer is content uh, that their removal subject to the protection of these to be retained um, is satisfactory. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. Uh, Councillor David Shortell. David. Hello, Councillor David Shortell. Yes, Chairman. Uh, the the one question I didn't get an answer to of the ones that I gave her uh, asked earlier was that of uh, accommodating the the construction tra traffic. Where oh, yeah. were the constructors would be cited whilst the development is going is taking place? Thank you. Uh, Chairman, do you want me to answer that question? Yes, please, Mr Rogers. Uh, well, in line with a number of redevelopment uh, sites, including a number of, of Preston Road ones, that's covered by one of the recommended planning conditions about a construction environmental management plan. And largely what will happen or what will is envisaged to happen is that those um, site operative uh, builders, vans, etc., etc., will be accommodated within the application site whilst they're actually constructing out the um, the build itself and then working their way back to do the uh, the car parking area. We have had previous enforcement issues on previous redeveloped flat sites along Preston Road where 
we have seen a number of, um, if I can call them white van man or woman, um, parking their uh, vehicles half on the highway and half on the um, on, on the road itself. And we've soon got our enforcement officers out and said, there's a construction environmental management plan here. You're not adhering to it, move. Um, and, and that's rectified itself. So largely those site operatives will be contained within the application site. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. Uh, Councillor Jean Dunseith. Uh, Councillor Jean. Thank you, Chairman. Jean Dunseith. Yes, yes, I'm here. Uh, you have um, a question or some comments? Yes, I Hello, do. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. I feel that this block of flats is overbearing for the space available. I'm concerned about the neighbours. This development is very close to number 58 Preston Road, in fact, eight metres away. I appreciate it is a development at the side of number 58, which along a normal street scene would be acceptable. But this development is going from a single storey plus roof to three storeys plus a roof. And I think that would be very noticeable for the residents of number 58 and would, would have an impact in on the the house in Fursey Close and the other side, um, the number 54 Preston Roads. I know there's been a daylight impact study, but I st which more or less is on the boundary of acceptable, but I feel it's overbearing for the space and the effect on the neighbours would be quite noticeable and would result in, I think they'd lose a lot of light, I think they'd lose a lot of sunlight and I think the rooms in their houses would be, would definitely be degraded as far as light goes. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Mr Rogers, any comments? Uh, Chairman, the report goes into detail about the impact on number 58 and you see for the photographs that yes. number 58 does have that side amenity garden area which they utilise as an outdoor um, um, area, particularly in, in, in very good weather. Um, but I have to make the point that that's not the sole area uh, for amenity for number 58 and the impact on, on the windows themselves. I have to say this, there will be an impact. The question that needs to be asked is, is that impact so significant to warrant the refusal of permission? Bear in mind what I've just said in terms of the wider amenity garden area for number 58, not just solely the side area but also that those side windows do have additional secondary windows to, both to the front and rear. So it's not as if these are the sole windows to those side elevation rooms where it would be more critical, where there are no additional windows. There are front and rear windows that do, uh, you know, uh, or, or are able to accommodate um, light to those, to those rooms. Thank you, Mr Rogers. Uh, Councillor Peter Barrow. Peter, good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, Chair. I'd just like to make a, a comment, please. It's uh, just like to echo Kate, Councillor Kate Weller's comments that it would be much more welcome to see a smaller development of, say, five instead of the seven flats that are proposed. And then we get the benefits of some development without the negative aspects of so what appears to be overdevelopment. And it's very disappointing to be always presented by such large schemes. Uh, which are always seem to be on the, you know, verging on being just too large, and therefore we have the negative aspects. However, I think I agree with Kate that I can't see a reason for refusal given the constraints that we're working under. That's what I'd like to say. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Councillor Peter Barrow. Uh, Councillor David Gray, would you like to come back 
Uh, with yeah. further questions or points of clarification? Yes, please, Chair. It's a, a really a build on Councillor Shortell's point about construction management plan. If you look at the street view uh, of the entrance to the property, there is a bus stop within um, a very short distance. I would like something in the construction management plan that forbids any use of that bus stop because um, we all know what uh, builders and developers will do when there's too many vans uh, on the site. So we've seen it before. I'd like a specific condition in the construction management plan saying that they, they that the uh, bus stop is in constant use and it's not to be used for any construction traffic, please. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gray. Uh, do we have any proposals? We don't have anybody wanting to speak, but do we have any proposals? Chairman, yes, I'd like to propose refusal, please. Sorry, which, can we, for the sake of clarification, uh, can you state your, your name, please? Yes, it's David Shortell. Thank you, David Shortell. Now, what is your proposal? My proposal is refusal for development under the grounds of layout and density, loss of light and overshadowing, highway safety, and contribution, contribution of the development plan. Chairman. Thank you. Chair. Okay. Sorry, who would like to comment? It's, it's Councillor Louis O'Leary. I'd like to second that, uh, Councillor Shortell. Councillor Louis O'Leary would like to second that. Okay. So at this point, I think we will then do a roll call of members. Um, Chair, Chair, sorry, uh, sorry Anne, can we, Anne, can we hear from, uh, from Mrs. Anne Collins, please? Thank you, Chair. Um, if that's a proposal. Would you like to introduce yourself, please, Anne? Sorry, Just it's for Anne, those, mem it's Anne those Collins, uh, members of the public who may have uh, joined since two o'clock. OK, it's Anne Collins here. I'm area lead for uh, South and West area. Um, in terms of those potential reasons of refusal mentioned by Councillor Shortell, um, could we be a bit clearer in terms of Pacific local plan policies and the Pacific highway safety concerns, please? And, 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 and Chairman, this is Darren Rogers, the case officer. I mean, uh, listening to uh, Councillor Shortell's proposition, um, it may well be more appropriate if we had a bit of a, uh, an adjournment to the application. Um, uh, the, the, the comment I wanted to make is that whilst the suggested proposition for reason for refusal is fine, um, are members really insistent upon the highway reason aspect, particularly bearing in mind the comments that we've got now highway objections and what I wouldn't want to be faced with um, at, on any appeal decision is a, a, an application for, for costs in relation to that particular aspect of any refusal uh, where we've got difficulty in justifying a reason for refusal on highway grounds in the light of no highway objections and given what I've previously explained as part of the MPPF. So an adjournment understanding Councillor Shortell's other concerns might be useful for us to suggest um, a more defendable reason for refusal on, on, on those other grounds. Yes, thank you, Mr. Rogers. Uh, I have one or two other points that I might wish to make as well. So with uh, Mrs. Collins' agreement, I think we should now adjourn. Chair, that, that's fine. How long would you like to adjourn for, Chair, please? Uh, I think if we adjourn until 15.40, Yes, Chair. OK. Are we all comfortable with that? Uh, Councillor David Gray, Vice Chair, are you happy with that? Yes. Until 20 to 4? Yes, I just would like when we come back to get some comment from the solicitor. Right. Uh, we do have Philip Crowther here attending the meeting, I believe. Chairman, yes, Phil, Phil Crowther here. I'm sorry, the audio cut out on Councillor Gray. All I heard was he'd like to hear um, my advice, and then I didn't hear 
on, on, on the what? grounds of refusal, on the grounds that the, the grounds that we've been put forward, and we'll go away and adjourn to work the words up. But I just, before we go away, I just like some comments from you on what you've heard in terms of grounds for refusal. Ch Chairman, can I come in after that quickly, please? Is Councillor Louis O'Leary? Yes, C Councillor Louis. Um, if not, can I also? We will hear from Councillor Louis O'Leary, and then we will adjourn. Um, are we not able to refuse it on grounds of uh, paragraph 148 of the MPPF, which encourages reuse of existing buildings as opposed to uh, demolition? Which we've used. Yes, on thank you. Things. Thank you for your comments. Prior to the adjournment. Chairman, if um, so, it's Phil, Phil Crowd again to, to answer. Um, Councillor Gray, please proceed. Sorry to, to answer Councillor Gray's question um my view would be that uh, matters of layout density and and loss of loss of light and overshadowing are all matters of planning judgment that the committee is entitled to form its own judgment on having taken into account the the officer's um report um the um the highway safety ground um my advice would be that you, you need to pay particular attention to what Mr Rogers and what Mr Graham have have said in, Thank you. in that um, there doesn't appear to be an objection from the highway authority so sustaining that that reason for refusal at appeal may well lead to an award of costs. Thank you. Uh, we will now adjourn. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Anne.
1540 chair. <clears throat> okay, officers, are we happy now to continue? Anne Collins here, yes I am. Right, thank you Anne. Would you like to uh, speak? Thank you chair. Um, yes, we've drafted a reason for refusal um, based on the words of Councillor Shortell just now. If you'd like me to read that out please chair. Uh, yes please, yes please Anne. The proposed development, by reason of its layout, mass, scale and bulk, would have an unduly dominating and overbearing impact on each side neighbouring property at number 54 and 58 Preston Road and 4 Fursley Close at the rear, that as a result would not would sit uncomfortably in relation to those neighbouring occupiers and would be a detriment to their amenity in respect of overshadowing and loss of light. Its mass, scale and bulk would be detrimental to the character and appearance of the area as such, the proposed development would be contrary to policies EMV10, EMV12 and EMV16 of the adopted Weymouth and Portland West Dorset Local Plan and Section 12 of the National Planning Policy Framework and in particular Paragraph 127, which states, amongst other things, that decisions should ensure that developments provide a high standard of amenity for existing and future users. Uh, thank you, Anne. For anybody who's just joined us, we are talking about application WP200027 oblique fold 56 Preston Road Weymouth DT3 6QA and we have a proposal for refusal and the proposer was Councillor David Shortell and this was seconded by Councillor Louis O'Leary. So I'm just going to give Councillor David Shortell and Councillor Louis O'Leary the opportunity to comment on what they've heard from Anne Collins. Uh, firstly, David Shortell, uh, are you happy with that interpretation of uh, of your previous comments, etc., David? Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, yes. Do you have anything to add? Yeah, those are exactly the the, the, the the words I've got written down. So thank you very much. Okay, uh, Councillor Louis O'Leary, do you have anything to add before we go to the vote? I'm happy with that one, Chairman. Right. Thank you. So, members, we have a proposal for refusal. So, without further ado, we will go through the list of members of this committee. So, uh, Councillor Peter Barrow. I am for uh, Peter Barrow. Uh, yeah. Which Chair, I'm, in, vote? I'm in favour of the proposal. Right, so you're voting for refusal. Yes. Uh, Kelvin Clayton? Um, not in favour of the proposal. Uh, right. Uh, Councillor Susan Cocking? Um, refusal of the application. Chair, Chairman, it, to make things easier, um, the, the proposal is for refusal. Could people say whether they're for, against or abstaining, please, right, just to make okay, it clear so for the public. We'll, we'll just go back to P Peter Barrow. I am uh, you're, you just confirm again, you are in favour of refusing. Yes, I'm voting in favour of the proposal, so for right. the proposal. OK, uh, Kelvin Clayton. Against. Right. Sue Cocking, I think you're for, for refusal. Yeah, for. Jean Dunseith. I'm in favour of refusing. David Gray. In favour of refusal. Uh, Councillor Nick Ireland. For. Councillor Nick Ireland, you're in favour of refusal, do I hear? Yes, for. Uh, Councillor Louis O'Leary, for the sake of clarification. Chairman, I'm for refusal. Councillor David Shortell, for the sake of clarification. I'm for refusal, Chairman. Councillor Sarah Williams. For refusal, Chairman. Councillor Kate Weller. For. You're for refusal, Kate. Yes, for refusal. Right. And I'm also for refusal. So this application has been refused by this planning committee today. Thank you, everyone. 
We now turn to the next item on the agenda, which is an application which you'll see under 5B, application to divert part of a bridleway. Uh, bridleway. This is number 39 Simmonsbury at Lower Eep Farm. And we will now hear from the officer who is dealing with this. If you would like to introduce yourself, Carol McKay. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, my name is Carol McKay um, and good afternoon to everyone. Can I just check that you can see the slide OK? Yes. Yes, Carol, we, okay. can, we can see your presentation. OK, that's lovely. So this is an application for a public path diversion order under Section 119 of the Highways Act. The diversion is in Lower Eep in Simmonsbury, just to the southwest of Bridport, which you can see where the red star is. And Bridleway 39 runs all the way from the A35 to Lower Eep, and the section to be diverted is a short section at the eastern end. So the current route of Bridleway 39 runs between A, B and C, shown here on the solid line. The proposed Bridleway runs A, D, E, F, C, part of that route being an existing footpath, so between E, F and C. The bridleway is being diverted in the interests of the landowner who has planning permission for a single storey dwelling north of the existing bridleway between B and C. So it's this area here that's being developed. The diversion would therefore improve the privacy and security of the new house. So this is the current route of bridleway 39 starting at point A and looking up towards B. From A, the bridleway runs up a fairly steep hill to point B, and this part of the bridleway has a gradient of approximately one in five. From here, the current route passes next to the existing silage clamps, which you can see on the left here, where the single storey building is being built. And looking back towards B, this is a more recent photo um, showing the current progress with the building work. So that's here on the right. And to the south of the current bridleway, there will be, so that on this side, there'll be a garden, parking area and turning space for the new dwelling. And this is point C looking back towards B. So this shows the current bridleway in the context of the development. On the left, you can see the bridleway passing in front of the silage clamps and on the right, a computer generated image of the new dwelling. It's worth mentioning at this point, the parish council who are objecting to the diversion also objected to this planning application for the proposed dwelling on the grounds that the bridal way would interfere with the house and vice versa. At the time, the planning officer stated in her report that the bridal way is not, directed, not directly affected by the dwelling, but it would be preferable that it didn't run through the curtilage. So a diversion was suggested. So moving on to the proposed new route of the bridleway, this is point A looking towards D. So the proposed route goes along this line and the current route from this point would go straight up the hill here. From point D, the bridleway runs uphill to E and F and the gradient is approximately one in seven. So slightly less steep than the current bridleway between A and B, which is, um, as I said before, approximately one in five. So this is at point E looking downhill towards D. And then this part of the proposed new bridleway is along the existing route of footpath 43 between E, F and C. And this footpath was diverted under Town and Country Planning Act as it was affected by the development. This is point C looking back towards F and you can see part of the proposed route is along a concrete track. So fairly similar in this in, to the surface of the current bridleway between B and C. So we have one objection to the diversion from Simmonsbury Parish Council. They have concerns about the validity of the diversion as the bridleway will be moved onto an existing footpath and permissive route. The Parish Council believe the bridleway should have been diverted under Town and Country Planning Act when the planning application was made. However, as explained in the report, the application is correct. Footpath 43 was diverted under Town and Country Planning Act as recommended but it wasn't possible to divert the bridleway as it's not affected by the development. 
The other concerns that the parish council have raised relate to the surface and the gradient of the new route. The surface of the new, the two routes are very similar, as you can see from the photographs, partly along grass and partly along concrete. And with regards to the gradient, I haven't surveyed the route, but I have used the one metre contour data, data available and calculated approximate gradients for both routes. So the new route is slightly less steep at the western end, but slightly steeper at the eastern end. The Equality Act 2010 places a duty on the council to take into account the needs of all people, including those with reduced mobility. But there are no statutory requirements for gradient on public rights of way. One in 12 is the maximum gradient preferred by the British Horse Society for horse riders. Under the Equality Act, the ideal maximum gradient for a built ramp is one in 20, but up to one in 12 is accepted depending on the length of the ramp. In the context of the local area, which is very fairly hilly, the proposed new route is considered reasonable and no less convenient or accessible than the current bridleway. The views are also improved from the elevated section between E and F, adding to the enjoyment of the bridleway. So it's officer's opinion that the application to divert part of bridleway 39 Simmonsbury meets the test set out under the Highways Act and should be accepted and an order made. The order should include provisions to modify the definitive map and statement to record the changes made as a consequence of the diversion. And if there are objections to a public path order, as the criteria for confirmation has been met, the order should be confirmed. However, if objections are received to the order, which are similar in nature to those already considered by the committee, the order should be submitted to the Secretary of State without further reference to the committee. Thank you very much. And um, I'll just hand back to the chairman. Uh, thank you very much, Carol. Uh, do we still have Mr. Philip Criver with us and would he like to make any comments? Uh, Chairman, yes, still here and no comments to make at the moment. OK, thank you. Uh, Councillor Nick Ireland, I understand you wish to speak? Yes, I do, please. Um, when I was reading this, um, the thing that concerns me is in, I, I know Carol didn't, Officer Mackay didn't mention it during the report, but um, part of the diverted route, it seems from the report, is permissive. Um, so I'd like clarification on that. And I'd also like clarification on what the, the consequences of that is. So as far as I can see, permissive doesn't mean that we have any rights. Um, so what effectively we're doing, we're taking some an, a route which is a right of way, which means we can run horses and et cetera, cycles along it, and we're replacing it with a di diverted route and effectively extinguishing that right because it's permissive. And as far as I can see, the landowner could withdraw that right at any time. And um, Officer Reid and Officer Mackay are well aware of um, an instance recently where everybody, including the council, thought there was a footpath for over 50 years. And when the landowner found it wasn't, they closed it. It's been closed and people have to walk on the road. So I just need an assurance that permissive paths can't be closed, that they're open. They can never be withdrawn because if they're not, I, I'm going to propose objecting to this. Thank you. All right. Would you like me to answer that? Uh, yes, please, Carol. So I apologise for the confusion. Um, I hope that it was clearer in my report. So the situation at the moment is um, the proposed new route is available on a permissive basis. Um, part of the new route is a recorded footpath, but the other section is a permissive route. If we divert the bridleway onto the new route, the whole route becomes the definitive bridleway and the, the permission is irrelevant. So we can divert onto a permissive path and then that route becomes a de definitive route rather than a permissive route. So there's no question of permission being withdrawn because it's no longer permissive. So I'm sorry that wasn't clearer in the report. Uh, Mr Criver, do you have anything to add? Uh, Philip Chairman, Criver, no. do you have anything to add? Chairman, uh, no. That answers my query, Chairman. That's fine. Do we, uh, members, do we have any further comments? Do we have anyone wishing to speak? Chair, is there anything from the public on this? Uh, we don't have any public representations. Do we have a proposal for approval? 
Chairman, it's Louis O'Leary. I'm happy to propose. So we have a proposal from Councillor Louis O'Leary. Chair, I'm Councillor Pete Barrow. I'm happy to second. Right. Thank you, everybody. So we've got a proposal for approval. And we will do this alphabetically. Uh, Councillor Peter Barrow, are you in favour? Yes, in favour. Uh, Councillor Kelvin Clayton? In favour. Councillor Susan Cocking? Yes, in favour. <coughs> Councillor Jean Dunseith? In favour. Councillor David Gray? In favour. Uh, Councillor Nick Ireland? In favour. Councillor Louis O'Leary? In favour. <coughs> Councillor David Shortell? In favour. Councillor Sarah Williams? In favour. Councillor Kate Weller? Kate? Four. You're in favour? Four. And I'm in favour as well. So, this application has been approved. This application as you've heard from Carol McKay this afternoon. Thank you. Uh, do we have any urgent items? Chair, Members? it's Anne Collins. No, we don't from the officer point of view. OK. So accordingly, I will close the meeting and thank you all very much for your Chair, attendance. Chair, Chair, we've got a question from uh, Councillor Weller. Ah, Councillor Weller. Thank you, David. Uh, Councillor Kate Weller. Thank you, Chair. Um, I won't keep you many moments. No, uh, not at all. Uh, I, I appreciate that that first application went on quite a long time, so we have actually been in, in the meeting now for getting on for two hours. Um, but there were only two applications on that committee, um, and our, I'm aware, and I'm sure that councillors in other areas are aware, that we've got a number of quite big applications stacking up, and I'm quite concerned that if we're only going to cover two applications per meeting, we're never going to catch up with that backlog. Um, and as I say, I'm aware of developments um, sitting desperately waiting to, to um, find out whether they're approved or otherwise. Um, and I just don't know when we're going to get on with them if it's only two, two applications per meeting. OK, thank you, Councillor Weller. Uh, Councillor David Gray and I will liaise on that and uh, doubtless speak to officers and we, we take your comments on board. Thank you for that, Kate. Any other further urgent items? In the absence of any urgent items, I declare the meeting closed. Thank you all very much and have an enjoyable afternoon, what's left of it. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, David.